Roger Ballen, uh, who doesn't need any introduction, uh, is one of the most innovative um, um, artists working with photography. And we are here because he has quite a few things in Paris going on. Uh, he has um, a, um, the, probably, is it the first uh, major France uh, show at the uh, Halle Saint-Pierre? Well, I have a uh, show at Hal Saint Pierre right now, and this uh, show links installations, drawings, photography, videos, and other things uh, in this exhibition. So the show opened about uh, two months ago, and it's the whole museum until August, so there's plenty of time to see it. Yeah, and also at the Galerie uh, Karsten Grev, uh, you have uh, another exhibition called uh, Childhood. Yeah, so I've been uh, photographing uh, children in some way or another over the years. And this exhibition uh, links the or pictures from the early 70s to about a year ago. And so the, um, the, um, I, was, I was wondering if you could tell us a bit more about your fascination with uh, Art Brut and how this uh, project, the, the, the World According to Roger Ballen, which is both an exhibition and um, a book with Thames and Hudson um, came about? Well, the thing is, is I uh, was always interested in uh, people on the outside, uh, people on the other side, the other side of the mind also. You know, uh, when you talk about the outside, it's, it's not only a physical place, it's a psychological place. So in order to enter the outside, you have to enter it from inside here. Everything starts with the mind. Always remember that. Everything you do is about the mind. You can't escape the mind. Without the mind, you don't exist. Remember that. You are only a figment of your mind. And so, let's go back a step or two. When we talk about art brute, yeah, I work with people on the outside, uh, people, uh, who don't consider themselves artists. But what is Mr. Ballin's job here? Mr. Ballin's job isn't necessarily to document their lives. Mr. Ballin's job is to transform a reality into something that stays in the mind. That's Mr. Ballin's job here. Only one job. And you also collect uh, Art Brut, because I, I was reading that in the show you will find not only your own work, but also uh, works that you found uh, over the years. Yeah, so in photography, unlike painting, you have to deal with the physical world. So in painting, I can have a dream one night and make a painting. In photography, I have to find physical objects to work with. And so I would say if I'm a specialist in anything other than photography, I'm a specialist in flea markets. If you have some good flea markets that you would suggest, please come and tell me after the talk. So, my, so I go from place to place, and I tell people, in my next life, I might not end up as a photographer, but more like a donkey. <laughs> <laughs> uh, also, your, your show in Arles was uh, quite uh, mesmerizing, and I was wondering, because uh, I mean, yes, of course, you are uh, well known as a as a photographer. But uh, is it recent uh, that your um, your approach to installation for your exhibition, where you you make it so such an immersive, uncanny, uh, at times disturbing uh, experience, or uh, has it always been present in your, in your mind that you wanted to go there? No, it's always like layer on layer on layer. You know, rarely uh, does something happen like this. It's usually like this, and sometimes you go sideways, obviously. And then you find yourself uh, building from your own experiences, from your own artwork, and then you end up in a place. And then, oh, I'm here now. This is a good idea. I've been making installations for photographs, for example. Maybe I should make some in installations for exhibitions. And so then you're ready to do it. You can't do things until you're ready to do them. If you're not ready to do them, they won't happen. So when you're ready, you're ready. That's it.
And to reverse the title of the book back at you, how is the world according to Roger Ballin? Uh, the world, of, uh, according to Mr. Ballin here, is quite enigmatic. Anybody who says any differently is fooling themselves. There's no concreteness in the world. There's no concreteness in the mind. I guess uh, the purpose of the photographs is to try to make things a little bit more clear in, in a world or in a state of uh, cloudiness and uncertainty. But don't expect anything more. You're fooling yourself if you do. Thank you. Um, your background, like you also did a PhD in mineral in, economics? Yeah, so I worked as a geologist for about the 25 years all over Africa, but I've been doing pictures since, well, for 52 years now. And how do you think that background has impacted, uh, if at all, uh, in your research interest? as an artist? Well, I would say one thing. You know, when you look at the rocks, you look at the earth, when your feet are on the planet that way, at least there's something to be inspired by. So if you have an ideal that you want your photographs to go towards, well, that's a good place to start. Yeah. Um, have you ever encountered in, in your career uh, criticism that attacked you for the way you uh, approached your subject? Yeah, of course. And how, how do you respond to that? Well, most of it has to do with somebody else's problems. <laughs> they can't deal with their own headspace, put it that way. When, when something enters their headspace that makes them anxious. Like most people in the world, they blame the other person. They should examine their head, headspace uh, before they start blaming me for things that they have no idea about what I do. The main thing for me, I can look in the mirror. I can look in the mirror and feel very comfortable about what I did over the years. No doubt. I don't worry about it. When you make yourself, when you do things like what I do over the years, you unsettle people. Most people don't like to be unsettled. They're like a clear road. They like to forget about all the uncertainty. And so my pictures make them look at, their own, look at themselves. They, my, my pictures make people's eyes turn inward and it makes them a bit nervous. And then when it makes them nervous, they blame me. Thank you very much. Is there any question from the public to Mr. Balin? Yeah. Hi, Mr. Balin. Hi. Um, uh, in your early works, we have uh, like all the things very con concrete, concrete uh, like the wires, the doors, and the man from the outland. It's all the things very uh, distant very uh, concrete. So um, in the recent works, uh, you, like, you change the uh, expressions to, uh, you change your expressions because the, the object is, is blurred, it's uh, yeah. abstract. I want to know uh, what changed you to that. Thank you. She, she basically asked why my st uh, style has changed or how my style has changed. Well, you know, these are generally, as I mentioned, it's a gradual, gradual process. You know, it's like a boat that's just like turning this way. But you got to understand one thing. I always go back to the geology again. So then you have the layer on layer and layer. And then in geology, there's something called the fault. I don't know if you ever heard of this. F-A-U-L-T, fault, like in the Santa Monica Fault in California. And then something happens like that for some reason. Maybe a bird flies into your head, I don't know. And then you start working on that and you build layer on layer on layer. So that's geological. It's the best way I can explain it. No straight path. Any other question from the public? Uh, if, yeah. Your inspiration is coming from outside. 
or from inside. You explained very well before this, but just a point, a little point about uh, and you have this all the time or from time to time? How, how you proceed in yourself? No, the thing is, is everybody's uh, going from one place to the next to the next to get inspiration. And I always tell uh, the students, uh, the best place and the most important place to get inspiration is from your own photographs. And if you're not inspired by what you do or what you find, you're in trouble. And so you have to find inspiration in what you do and that only happens through dedication, passion, hard way, work, and uh, if you have talent. Like I could try to be a pianist my whole life. I have no talent. I'm never gonna be inspired by my musical abilities. I'll never be inspired because I have no talent. So you gotta find the place uh, where your mind works well. You gotta find what you're good at because then you're gonna more likely get inspiration and passion from what you do. We're not all good at the same thing. I'm not gonna become an Olympic weightlifter. You realize your dreams, because all this I take like a dreams as well. Look, a nightmare is good for you. There's nothing wrong with a nightmare. If it scares you a little bit, it's telling you something. Contemplate it. Don't run away from it. It comes from your core somewhere. So don't be scared. While I pass the mic to him, one question. How do you relate with psychoanalysis? Well, look, psychoanalysis was started by uh, Freud and whatever. So, look, the many, uh, you know, it's a very, very big field, and I'm not the world's expert in the field, but there's a lot of very interesting ideas and issues that, that come from psychoanalysis. Some might not fit contemporary thought and others will be around for the next thousand years. So in any, in any field, there's good things to take, things that are relevant to yourself and things that don't relate to you. But certainly, it's useful to study psychoanalysis like it is it's useful to study behavior psychology. It's useful to study animal psychology. All these things, when put together, you know, give you some sense of, of reality or some sense of truth or whatever. Yes, hi. Um, you talked about having, having a job, uh, 20 years being a geologist. geologist yeah. um, was it difficult for you to change to the, to the art? And, uh, no, because I kept doing it. See, I was very fortunate. I was, Mr. Ballin was Mr. Ballin's boss. I didn't work for other people. So I was doing my thing in geology, looking for minerals, but doing photography at the same time. So I did them in parallel, although there were periods in my life where I spent more time in my business career or, or geological career than my photography, but I kept going. And this is also a very important idea. You know, doing artwork isn't, uh, you know, people think it's just like inspiration all the time. It's hard work, it's dedication, it's like being an athlete. In order to go forward, you have to do the work. You have to get out there. There's no substitute for getting out there and trying to do the work. The hard part is doing the work and getting it right. The rest is easy. The hardest thing in my life is taking the pictures. This is easy compared to that. <laughs> I think we have time for one last more question. Hi, I guess this is more like follow-up question from your previous question about finding your passion. Um, what if like it, you struggle to find what is right for you? Do you spend your whole life searching or like, I, I guess that's an open question. You know, things can go right for a while and they go wrong. You know, you have to accept that changes all the, all the, all the time. So, you know, you just have to uh, continue with the, with the process and be dedicated to it in your own way. Uh, life's not perfect. And, uh, you know, um, it's good to find things that you're passionate about, about and, and, and give you some sense of purpose. And it's easy to get frustrated, obviously, but, you know, if you don't uh, seek, you don't get. If you don't try, you don't succeed. So 
you know, and you have to find your own path. It's, as I said to somebody this morning, probably um, the biggest selling books in the world are how to, but forget it, forget it. Don't buy the book, you gotta find your own way. So unfortunately, that's the way it is. Thank you ever so Thank much you. for being with us. So you have these two exhibitions to Thank see you. in Paris. Catch them you, as man. soon as you can. And, and, the, and the book by Thames and Hudson, The World According to Roger Ballin. Thank you very much. Just one last thing, if you are interested in the book, uh, Christoph Guy, G-U-Y-E, has some signed. copies of the books there, if you're interested, and I signed them already. Thank you. At, at 4 p.m. you have a book signing? No. I did sign it already, but if anybody's interested, I can go to the uh, gallery. I think it's 812 or 824, G-U-Y-E, there's some books there. I'd be happy to go there and sign a few if somebody's interested. And thank you very much. Thanks, thanks a lot.